Aliens. Good lord am I afraid of these green little goobers. My whole life I have been deeply afraid of two specific things. Ghosts, which objectively are not real, but I still run to the bathroom at 2 a.m. because I'm terrified of seeing a Victorian child in my kitchen. And aliens, something that is mathematically probably real, which keeps me rooted in a constant state of fear and panic. I believe in aliens, and apparently I'm not alone. According to a recent survey, 65% of Americans believe in aliens, but also one third of Americans believe in Bigfoot. So, you know. You're the company you keep. And despite the fact that the only evidence we really have is some Nokia phone footage and a paper mache corpse, we really want this thing to be real. We really want aliens to be real. But I don't understand that. Why do we want, why the hell do we want that? Do we think they're gonna be nice? Do you think aliens are flying millions of light years just to land on Earth and give us a crisp high five? No, they're coming for our organs, or at the very least our natural resources, and we have a limited supply of those. So in this video, I'm gonna try and prove to myself and you guys that aliens definitely don't exist. That way I can stop quivering in fear every time I go camping and have to take a late night lean against a tree shit. Because that's when they get you. That's when you're most vulnerable and they suck you up into that spaceship. I've, I've, I've heard of it happening. Okay, so here's every fact that I could scrape together to firmly prove that these little space demons definitely don't exist. Now, I will say it's a lot harder to prove something doesn't exist than it does because, I don't know, I didn't pay attention in debate class, but there's something called, like, the b burden of proof fallacy. I don't know. So I had to hurdle a few hurdles to get this ironclad argument together, but I, I am sure you will be satisfied with my uh, uh, airtight results. So without further ado, indisputable proof that aliens do not exist. Number one, aliens are not in the Bible. I mean, that's gotta mean something. Look, I know the Bible isn't necessarily the barometer of truth. You know, there's some weird shit going on in there. But the book supposedly starts at the beginning of time and it talks about a bunch of crazy shit. There's that story about a guy asking for a daughter's hand in marriage and the father says, go and get me a hundred foreskins of my enemies and he brings back 200. Then there's that dude, Jonah, who got eaten by a giant fish and then walks out of the giant fish three days later. And it's not a whale. They don't say it's a whale, it's a big old fish. And there's a dude named Enosh who lived for 800 years. And there's also a talking donkey. But despite all of that, there's not one mention of aliens. Sorry for talking trash about the Bible, I just haven't been able to do that for a long time and it's it's coming out of me. But like I said, not one mention of a little green guy coming out of the sky and, you know, walking around with the people. That doesn't happen once in the Bible, you think they'd mention it at least once. I mean, yes, there's several stories of people coming out of the sky to communicate with humans, often depicted as otherworldly creatures that give them untold knowledge that uh, changes humanity forever. But that's, that could be a lot of things. Number two, most alien sightings are silly and dumb. Just straight up. Nothing spooks me more than a story of someone just living their life, getting scooped up by aliens, poked with a bunch of sticks, and then dropped off in a field with less dignity and more personality. That being said, most of these stories are spongy, AKA full of holes. Proud of that one. Like take the first documented alien sighting in America. 1639, three guys are rowing a boat across a muddy river and all of a sudden they look up and it's just a bunch of crazy lights going off in the sky. They say it shot back and forth for hours and it took the appearance of swine like a pig. That's a weird part of it, but that's what they said. But that could be explained uh, easily with the uh, experts saying it's Ignis Fatus. Is that how you pronounce it? Regardless, it's Will of the Wisp. It's a pale light that appears over like swamp lands, which is just the gases in the swamp igniting and just creating like a fireball that floats around. And it looks nothing like a pig. So I think they were just kind of losing their minds all at once. And everyone was drunk back then. No one was drinking water, so it makes sense. Or honestly, any modern day alien story. Like, you know when you're at your grandma's house and you're flipping through like the cable channels because she has cable for some reason and you end up on like History Channel and it's just a bunch of people telling alien stories for some reason. All of those stories start with, well, I was in my bed in the middle of the night. You mean, oh, you know, you mean where dreams happen? You, you mean where dreams begin? A little green man came in through my window at two in the morning. Yeah, and I kissed George Washington on the lips last night, but I didn't call my local newspaper. Same goes with ghost stories. Like everyone has a ghost story when they were half asleep, like cause you were fucking dreaming, you idiot. I mean, sure there's harder to disprove encounters like the Barney and Betty Hill story or the aerial school UFO sighting that happened and 62 school children all reported seeing an alien come and land in their parking lot and then it came out and talked to all of them about how the earth was dying and they all started crying and each individual one had separate stories that all lined up with everyone else's in terms of the size and shape of the being and also the, the ship it landed in. Uh, but the, it's kids, you know? What, it's dumb kids. And number three, if aliens were real, we'd know. We would know about that. Just think about it for a second. Like, please, me and you, let's think for a moment. If aliens are real, that means there is, at the very least, a small threat to our daily lives. Which also means that there is a threat to, oh, I don't know, our elected officials and governments. And that being said, if aliens are real, that would mean our governments are constantly coming up with plans to handle the situation and looking into the situation further. And I mean, it's pretty unlikely that governments from around the world would not only actively try and withhold information from the public, but also try and cover up things using, you know, mass propaganda over extended periods of time. That, you know, 
It's not plausible. I'm so scared, dude. I'm so fucking scared. This shit is real. Whoa now. Let's all take a second and calm down with this quick and sexy ad. Take it away, Tucker. A uh, quick question. Have you ever been harmed in such a way that you thought out loud, boy howdy, do I deserve some financial compensation for my pain and suffering? Well, goodness gracious, could Morgan and Morgan have you covered? That's right, Morgan and Morgan again. I I re I physically cannot be stopped. When you're seriously hurt, you deserve the best on your side. Your injury could literally be worth millions. That's right, millions with a big old M. In Insurance companies often lowball offers. When you get uh, hit by a car or exploded by a rogue Roman candle. But Morgan & Morgan fights to get their clients what they deserve. She got the insurance companies shaking in their wee little boots. Don't just take it from me. Look at all the money they've won for their clients over the past couple months. I mean, 12 million? That's a lot of, holy cow, 26 million. I will die before I see money like that. Maybe not though if I use Morgan & Morgan. The fees are free unless you win, so you have nothing to lose. And it only takes a few minutes to find out if you have a case or not. You can get started so easily with just a click. Start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan at www.forthepeople.com backslash big talk and find out exactly what Morgan & Morgan could do for you. It's so funny, I don't know. I think it's funny that Morgan & Morgan lets me talk about them. I think that's great. Okay, so maybe they're real. Maybe they're real. When doing research to prove that aliens didn't exist, uh, the majority of links I could have clicked on were telling me that aliens were probably real, which was a huge bummer. Now, is this because it's a lot more fun to read about how aliens do exist and that makes the links float to the top on Google? Maybe, but I am not gonna click on the number two at the bottom of the page. I'm not a sucker. So maybe we should just work backwards and cover why aliens might possibly be real and then discuss why those facts are incorrect. And then, then I can sleep better at night. So here are some reasons why aliens might be real, but they're a bunch of hooey and garbage. Number one, mathematically, the odds are in aliens' favor. Uh, that's a bummer. So the universe is big. It's like really, really big. Like if you made a list of all the biggest things in the universe, well, it'd be the universe, so it'd be number one. It's 94 billion light years across and it contains billions of galaxies. And the galaxy that we live in, the Milky Way, has 100 billion star systems, all of which uh, technically could, you know, have intelligent life in it because of the, the parameters. So if you break down the odds of us being the only smart enough things to, you know, make chocolate chip cookies or a Camaro, the odds are pretty slim to none. Then some science asshole named Frank Drake really did the math and he made something called the Frank Drake equation. Really lame to name something after yourself, I think. You know, you really need that notoriety, douche. It was made in 1961 and it was pretty much just a math problem proving that it's probably going to be really easy to find extraterrestrial life after a certain period of time. This equation also suggests that we'll be able to contact alien life by 2040. So make sure to dot those I's and cross those T's on your tax forms, ladies and gentlemen, because that fucking matters. That matters because everything's about to go to shit. Uh, to argue against this point uh, is the fact that we haven't seen anything yet, so that's good. We have them big fucking telescopes and we, uh, we haven't found anyone, so you know, things are looking up. The number two proof that aliens exist is the research. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of research pointing towards alien life. Even though we haven't found concrete evidence that uh, aliens exist, the government has been looking into it for 70 years. 70 years they've been looking into it. Remember when I said all that shit about the government earlier? That was sarcasm. That was a big old joke. You've been joked. I mean, we got Project Blue Book, which was an Air Force investigation that lasted from 1947 to 1969. Officially, the program ended because there was no extraterrestrial UFO life found, which is uh, the first win I've had in this entire video. However, declassified documents show that throughout the lifespan of Project Blue Book, uh, 12,600 18 UFOs were reported and 701 of them remain unidentified. What the fuck happened to no evidence, government? What What do you mean? We're just gonna ignore 700 of them? We're gonna ignore, se what is this, the first 48 hours where if you don't solve it quick enough, you just give up? 700, 700 UFOs were unidentified. Imagine if you came home and there were 700 hamsters in your living room. You wouldn't just say, oh, that's a weird coinky dink and go back to your office. You'd look into the hamsters. And then in 2007, the Pentagon established the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, which by every definition is a red flag. The program documented and examined cases of military pilots seeing things fly around them that uh, defied laws of gravity and made no literal sense. I mean, we've all seen this thing. That thing was crazy. And that's not even the part that scares me. The part that scares me is this program gave grants to studies that are called, and I'm not kidding, traversable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy, invisibility cloaking, and warp drive dark energy and the manipulation of extra dimensions. Oh my god. God! I mean, how am I supposed to look at that and not think aliens are real? Oh yeah, the government's just looking into sci-fi topics because it's a goof. They're just bored. We are so fucked. We are so fucked. I mean, this is just the new shit that involves aliens. There's a bunch of old shit that involves aliens that we can't explain. I mean, I guess I'll talk about that now. I don't know, there's a bunch of shit that humans apparently did in the past that we just can't physically explain. I mean, heads up, this segment's gonna be conspiracy level silly, but every time I look into this stuff, I get a little bit more scared, and my tinfoil cap gets a little bit tighter. Here are some famous things that people think aliens made, and I am inclined to believe them. Number one, the Egyptian pyramids. You knew I was gonna get lippy about them triangles, you just knew. So for nearly 4,000 years, the Great Pyramid of Giza was the tallest man-made structure on Earth. And get this, we have no idea how this, or any of the pyramids, were built. 
zero fucking clue. They are some of the biggest and most well-known structures on Earth, and the only thing we can come up with is uh, ramps. Maybe they used ramps. Maybe that's how they did it. There were 2.3 million slabs of granite to make this thing, and each one weighed 2.5 tons. And we, even today, if we used our technology, we still wouldn't really be able to do this. It would take some really crazy ass technology and also an insane amount of time to get done. I mean, even Elon Musk thinks aliens built these things. And I know he's not a great benchmark for reality, but I mean, he builds rockets. You know, he knows when something's kind of difficult. Then we have Stonehenge, a rather uninspiring uh, monument, but an, a monument nonetheless. Stonehenge is a prehistoric site on, in southern England that confuses the shit out of many uh, professionals. It's a bunch of 13 foot rocks weighing 25 tons each and they're all standing straight up and no one knows how the fuck they did it or why they're doing that. There's no written record of it at all. There's no, no one jotted down the day they built this shit. It could be ruins, it could be a burial site, it could be a holy site. There's one thing for sure, with the technology of the past, it would be near goddamn impossible for a human to erect this shit. A lot of people think aliens did it. A lot of people think aliens made this for a landing pad for their ship so it'd be easy to get in and out, but I think that's a little much, but I still think this is confusing. And then there's those weird Easter Island sculptures that no one knows how they really built them. Or there's those pyramids in Mexico that are so precise that even today we wouldn't be able to do it. Or Machu Picchu, everything going on over there, that shit's crazy. It's all so crazy, dude. It's all so real. Aliens are real. They just exist, and there's nothing we can do about it, and I, I wish a government official would just reach out to me and say, hey, they are real. Just like one of you guys, if you are in the government, if you're in the FBI, just reach out to me and just, just message me, it's real. So I can go to bed, so I can give up on this shred of hope that we're the only things in this universe because I don't want to get fucking fried by a laser beam at two in the morning. <sighs> like, comment, and subscribe. New videos every Saturday. I'm not going outside for a long time after this one. You guys enjoy watching me deteriorate like this? Hey, go back and watch one of my original videos. Those bags under my eyes are not as dark. I am losing my mind.